You see how everything connects, everything connects when you understand waves. All I'm doing is teaching you about wave theory. That's all I'm doing. You're just learning about waves because everything is waving. There's only waves, electromagnetic waves. So how does it work on a flat earth? Which is the true, 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 true model. Let's see how all of this works. Shall we? So this is the Arctic Circle here. This is the Tropic of Cancer. This is the, trop uh, the equator. Running right through Ecuador. And look at that, us at the Yucatan Peninsula. Actually, that's wrong because the Tropic of Cancer is slightly above Mexico City. So we are right here on the Yucatan Peninsula, right, right there. And they've got the Tropic of Cancer here. It should be here on this side. But it doesn't matter. The point is the sun is doing this. June the 21st. Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, always balancing the middle, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini. There is the North Pole. Here is the Arctic Circle. Here is the Tropic of Cancer. Here is the equator. Here is the Tropic of Capricorn. This is what the sun is doing. It is a known fact that the sun is further away from the Earth in June in the Tropic of Cancer than in January in the Tropic of Capricorn. The globe theory people tell you that it's five million miles closer to the Earth when it's in January Capricorn than when it's in June Cancer. So what's happening is on the flat Earth, this is what's going on. Cancer is up here, the equator is here, and Capricorn is here, like this. And in Bhagavad Gita, it says that Sri Ram, the sun, is climbing a ramp up to Capricorn, and then going up to Cancer, and then going down to Capricorn every year. Six months, six months. In the Book of Enoch, it says there are six portals here. Six gates of the sun. And this is the ramp of the ram, the lamb of God, the sun, Ra, incarnated. Ra incarnated. And that's why when you're in Sweden or something like up here, Finland, that's why you can see the midnight sun for 24 hours because it's higher and it's doing a smaller circle. But then you say, hang on a minute, well, if the sun is doing, going around here every 24 hours, it must be speeding up to do the same thing here. So does the sun go faster at Capricorn? Is it a variable speed sun? No, it's not. But it's covering more distance. That's almost double the length. The analema teaches that. Look, the analema is small here, small circles. Here it's really big. This is, the sun makes this pattern, analema, every year in the sky. Study the analema. Study it. It's very important. You understand the flat earth properly. Well, it's like this. I've got a torch, right? And I'm shining it three foot ahead in front of me. And I'm turning around 
every five seconds. Every five seconds. And I do not speed up. Right. Now I lift my torch up and it's over there. But I'm still turning. Five seconds. So, is this torch going faster? Same, nothing's changed. I've just changed the angle. Now, the light is covering more space. This is why a lot of globe people, they just they, oh, but how do seasons happen? How does night happen, day happen? How does this and how does that? It's, it's, <laughs> this is the only way to explain it. The, the globe you just simply cannot explain anything. It never has and never will. It's, it's impossible. So, so, that's why when you are in, say, Boston over here, you have to look south to Argentina to see the sun coming up in the east and setting in the west. See, when the sun is here, it's, it, the sun is local. It's only about 60 or 70 mile high. So it's shining, it's shining electromagnetically in this area. And as it goes around, it brings the light with it. And where it cuts off is called the delineator. I've seen the delineator. I was flying from Perth to Melbourne in 2002. And everybody in the plane, there was like 300 people in the plane, we're going from west to east. So the sun is behind us setting. Everything 180 degrees in front of us was black, black, pitch, black, black. And everything behind us was pure daytime. And in the middle, you could see dark there and light there. We saw the delineator. You see, see I know how it works. Pilots see this all the time. There's photos all around all the time about people saying, hey, look at this, man. It's night over there and it's day. What's going on? You see, I've seen hundreds of these videos because, see, the sun is local. That could never happen if the sun was 90 million miles away. It could never happen. I've seen the delineator. And what's more, what we saw as well was a rainbow, a rainbow on the flat earth Starting where the black big ended and going all the way around, all around behind us was a rainbow on the flat earth. Now, rainbows arch, but they don't bend. You know what I mean? A, a rainbow will, has an arch, but it won't bend this way, right? That proves that the earth is flat. We saw a rainbow right on all the way around. It was the most crisp, crisp, most beautiful rainbow. Everything in front was black, everything was light, and there was a rainbow on the flat earth. And besides, I looked out my left window, and the horizon came up to the middle of the window at my eye level. I looked out the right window, and the horizon of the earth came to the middle of the window at my eye level. Where's the Where's the slope? Where's the... Why is the earth come... As you, I'm 45,000 feet high and the earth has come up to my eye level to meet me in the sky. That proves that the earth is an infinite plane. That's why it's called a plane net. It's a plane. All right, let's move on. All right. This is the wheel of all the festivities. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go through some of these festivities. You'll notice that most of them are hubbed around the, uh, the cardinal signs, like Christmas in the winter solstice, uh, all of these celebrations, Easter, Bikram, Sakura, the Japanese, you see, and then, and then I should have... This hasn't been filled out properly, but here there's tens and tens of Jewish festivals. They love this month. This is their month because they are Saturnian and Christians love the East. That's why all the cathedrals face the East and they are solar worshippers. Whereas Jews are Saturnian worshippers. It's not about good and evil. We've gone, pure, <laughs> we've gone past that, right? Okay. 
So let's have a look at some of these festivals. But before we do, there we go. We start the year with the March Vernal Equinox. That is Easter. The sun is in the east. Stonehenge marks people go to the pyramids in Chichen Itza. They go everywhere on the Vernal Equinox to see this phenomena that the buildings are lined up. Now, if we're flying at 650 million miles an hour, according to the Jesuit liar Copernicus, how can this be happening every year? And these buildings are thousands of years old and the sun is still rising there at March the 21st every year. But does it work with the Earth's constant? Because the Earth is stationary. Because the Earth is st it never moves. Can you feel it moving? If, if it were travelling at 650 million miles an hour, which is 870,000 mark, 870,000 times faster than the speed of sound, do you think there'd be a wobble or two every now and then? Have you been in a plane where you're just about to fall asleep because it's so still up in the sky and you're just... And then all of a sudden, ding, ding, ding. Uh, this is the captain. Please put your seatbelts on. We're about to come into some rough weather. And all of a sudden, the plane starts going boom, 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 boom. And your, your head nearly goes through the roof. It's pretty vicious up there, man. Sometimes I thought I was going to die, some of the storms I've been through. It's hell. The plane's going boom, 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 boom. And the wings are going kunk, kunk, kunk. It was awful. Awful. Scary. And here we are, 650 million miles an hour. First of all, we're rotating at 1,000... 1,045 mile an hour rotation. 666 miles an hour orbit. Third mo motion is 550 thousand mile an hour our sun is going around the center of the Milky Way galaxy and then 650 million miles every hour we are being displaced through space 650 million miles every hour and we never ever ever see any new stars the ones we're coming to aren't getting brighter. The ones we're leaving behind aren't getting darker. Aries still looks like uh, it looked like when the Egyptians first recorded it 450,000 years ago. Same shape. Yeah. And supposedly this star in Aries, Sheridan, is uh, eight light years away. And this one's 60 million light years away. You would think there'd be some parallax, wouldn't you? You know what parallax is? So if I get my computer and that sister lined up, straight line, that's called a syzygy. But this, see now we've got a triangle, that's parallax. Because what's closer moves. See, when you're in a train, the trees in the field, in the, in the paddocks, the trees are going fast. But the trees on the mountain, you can watch them for an hour. They're not moving because they're far away. But these ones, oh, was that an eagle? Oh, was that a hawk? You can't even see it. It's that fast. So if we're traveling at this speed, thank you, Jesuit liar and Newton, uh, Copernicus and Newton and Galileo and Einstein, um, why don't we have parallax between this star, which is so close to us, and that one which is billions of light years away. Why, doesn't, why isn't there any parallax? Why isn't there no triangulation? This is 450,000 years of recorded history, guys. This is checkmate for the globe. It's just checkmate. And yet people can't... They see this and they say, Oh, yeah, but, 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 and then they fly away. They run away. There's no answer for it. But it's already checkmate. It's impossible. We would see random stars every single day. Now, if you're a God believer, I would say, God, you get the sack. You are the most boring. You, you mean to tell us you stuck us on this 
sod of dirt that's flying at Mark 870,000 Mark, and you're not going to give us any other new stars other than Aries, Taurus, boring Gemini, boring Cancer every freaking year after year, and they never change shape and they never go. It's always the same, same, same every year, every year. You're sacked. And what about the Big Bang people who, you know, are godless? What about them? Are they, dis they must be disappointed too. Because they believe in their theory that they're travelling at 650 million miles an hour and yet Polaris is still there and it's not going to move. It hasn't moved forever and it never will move because it's in the middle of the dome and it's where Brahma lives, Jehovah, and where all the blessed gods live at the very top in Polaris. Polaris, Sirius, and Alcyone are the three most important stars that you must know. Alcyone is the throne of God. It's one of the seven stars of the Pleiades. Sirius is the brightest star of the, brightest star of the sky and is the mother of our sun. And Polaris is here, top of your head, according to Chinese acupuncture. In Chinese acupuncture, they say that this, this point here at the top of your head is Polaris. And guess what? This is a dome, isn't it? And you have an abdomen here. And you have a thorax, which is a thorax, a torus field. And how many discs in your thoracic? Twelve. And how many knights does King Arthur have and his round table? And who is Thor? It's Zeus, Jupiter, Jupiter Zeus, which is shortened to Jesus. And how many disciples, disciples does Jupiter Zeus, Jesus have? Twelve. It's all the same. Jacob has twelve sons. Israel has twelve tribes. There are 12 copper calves holding up the molten sea in the tabernacle, 12 loaves of bread on the um, table of sacrifice. There are 12 pillars in the temple of my God. And Josephus and both Josephus and, um, and who another Jewish, great Jewish. Anyway, Josephus said 2,000 years ago, he said, every time you see 12 in the Bible, which is everywhere he said it is the greek zodiac the greek zodiac why does god say to job in job 38:32 hey job uh, do you know the maseroth what's the maseroth the zodiac why didn't they translate it? Why did they leave one Hebrew word untranslated in the whole King James Bible? Why did they not translate Maseroth into Zodiac? Because they can't afford to, can they? Because they're trying to hide that the Bible is not astrological, but the Bible is the best astrological treatise in the history of history. It's all astrology. All of it. Huh? Who cast it out of the translation? Who cast it out of the translation? You said they cast it out. Mm -hmm. uh, translate it. Is that what the word Maseroth? Yeah. Oh. The liars and the deceivers. Who are they? Uh, the Jesuits. The Jesuits and the elite families who fund them. Sasha knows all about this. Uh, decided in the 1500s that they would, destroy, they would start a counter-reformation. In 1545, they convened the Council of Trent, which lasted for 20 years. In that council, they decided that they would send all of their missionaries around the world and destroy their flat earth cosmology and bring in the globe and the global agenda. Global warming, global governance, global economy, global lockdowns, global community, global religion, and there's no globe. 
You see how they've fooled mankind? Who are our enemies? Don't we call them the globalists? Well, doesn't that tell you what their false idol is? The globe. Globalism. And here, the Mayans, they laugh. I talk to the Mayans about the globe and... <laughs> stupid freaking Europeans. The earth is stationary. It doesn't move. Duh. And then they say, and it's an extensive plane. What do you mean by extensive plane? Well, we don't know the ends of it. So, essentially, I was going to take you through all the festivals. Um, I will let you look at these beautiful festivals along the year. There's so many, and each one of them... I'll leave the slide up for the camera, so the camera can uh, read all of these. All of these have a very, very special meaning on the ecliptic, folks. None of these festivals happen by chance. None of them. They all equate to a specific day, a specific time of the year. And I'm going through the whole year here, friends. Um, if you look at my Sacramento presentation, I did this one in Sacramento on my YouTube channel. So I'm just going to quickly do this for the camera and then we'll get some questions. All of these, all of them, have great, great meaning. The great holy days of the year. I just wish I could spend time to um, go through each one of them. But uh, I will be doing these exclusively for the uh, Syncretism Academy. These will come out and every slide will be, will be dealt with extensively. So you can learn about the ecliptic through that. Alright, so just one thing I want to do, and that's it, is show you, for instance, we know that the sun is born on the 25th of December. Jesus is in the manger and he's born on the 25th of December. Well, why is that? Well, because this is the shortest day of the year and it takes three days for the sun to begin moving on the horizon, which happens at midnight on the 24th. So the 25th is the first day that the sun actually begins to climb. So, of course, that's when the sun is born. Well, well, if the sun is born here, when is it conceived? Go back nine months to the 25th of March, a day after my birthday. This is called the day of conception, when Gabrielle says to Mary, Hey, Mary, guess what? You're going to have a son. And he will be born. Right? Well, nine months. After six months, what happens in the womb? The baby drops, doesn't it? It drops. There you go. There's the drop. And then it's born here. The mother of Jesus. She's conceived here on the 8th of December, the day of the Immaculate Conception of the Virgin. Well, when, he, when is she born then? The 8th of September. The, the Nativity of the Virgin. Conception of the Virgin, Nativity of the Virgin. Conception, the day of conception, this is called the 25th of March, the birth of the Son. Here's another one. John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, he is the summer solstice. Jesus is the winter solstice. 
In the scripture it says, Jesus says, he will go on, uh, sorry, John the Baptist says, he, referring to Jesus, he will go on increasing and I will go on decreasing. It's just talking about the ecliptic. That's just two examples. I could show you millions of examples. For instance, this is the day of Mary Magdalene. Well, the moon rules cancer. And the last day of cancer is the day of Mary Magdalene. What other funny, interesting days do we have? Yeah. First time I've ever been to Rome, and that's where the, the bottom of the Spanish steps is the Ave Maria and all that. Mm. And suddenly they started shutting it off. Mm. And the Pope came to do whatever. <laughs> I mean, and uh, what was that special? I mean, it was a special. You know, what day was it? No, I need to know the date. <sighs> it's probably related to the nativity, uh, the conception of the Virgin. Yeah, it was the eighth of December. Mm. See, the fifteenth of August. This is Virgo, the Virgin, Mary. The fifteenth of August is the day called Assumption. In other words, she, is, she goes up to heaven. Well, why is that? Oh, simple. Because that's the day, the 15th of August, when Virgo disappears. The last star of Virgo disappears on the 15th of August. So she's assumed. But then, a few weeks, three weeks later, you begin to see the first stars of Virgo again and this is when she's born. You see? The nativity of the Virgin. She's born again. It's all about Virgo. So, it's, it's every... Uh, I've got hundreds of them, hundreds of festivals in there. I just haven't had time to come up to, to, to do them. But, um... Every, everywhere along here, there's massive, massive, massive storytelling. Um, in India, in uh, the Mayans, their festivals, they're all... Here in Ecuador, when I spoke to the priests there, they said these are their main festivals of the year. Funny about that, isn't it? They have four main festivals. The equinoxes and the solstices. And then, and then there's the cross-quarter days. And they also are portals. That's why the elite, they always have their um, rituals on those eight days. When was the Hindu religion split? Like with the, with the Sikhs and the... It's about 500 years ago, I believe, but I don't accept history anymore, as we're told. Uh, I think they've always been around. So we're always told that there are two different calendars. The Roman, the Julian. How, what does that do to all the dates and the, the schematic? Well, the JC calendar, Julius Caesar, is Jesus Christ. It's the same person. Julius Caesar is betrayed by Brutus. Jesus Christ is betrayed by Judas. Julius Caesar is a popular hero. Jesus Christ is a popular hero. The calendar is called the Julian calendar. It's also called Anno Domini, the year of the Lord, A.D., 
So they both have the same... <laughs> Secular people call it the Julian calendar. Christians call it the calendar based on Jesus, both JCs. One dies in 44 BCE, one dies at 33 CE, one crosses the Rubicon, one crosses the, uh, the, the Jordan. They both die on the Ides of March. Both died on the Ides of March. You see, Francesco Carrotta, an Italian um, historian, he's, he's written a book about it. Julius Caesar is Jesus Christ. And you can watch him on YouTube, you're talking about it. You can see how he, he proves that whatever Julius did, Jesus did. It's the same archetype. They just appropriate the Gospels and Romanize them. Once they were Egyptian, once they were Babylonian, once they were Zoroastrian. Now they're trying to make a new age. And they're going to try and change the cosmology again to suit the new age. But it's all based on the ecliptic. But the actual figure speaking really the wind, Jesus probably lived? No, of course not. It was just the stories that came from all this astrological um, yeah. constellation. Yeah. Yeah, that's Jesus and the twelve disciples. That's Arthur and his twelve knights. That's Jacob and his twelve it's tribes. It, it's like a mirror. <laughs> yeah, it well it's 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 obviously not history, it's no. a gospel. No. So if it's a gospel, well, then it's a fairy tale. Can I interject briefly? Yeah. Um, there's also a lot of uh, evidence that indicates that, for instance, um, when, when the Babylonian priesthood or the arcane priesthood um, are going to try to concoct a new religious mythos in order to indenture another um, wheel of civilization into a religious um, Exactly. When you do your compar comparative study, then you will see this. That's why the, each church does not want you to read other books. When I was a Jehovah's Witness, it was prohibited to read books from the deceivers. Only read what the governing body publishes. <laughs> Go and check out Jehovah's Witnesses, right? Go into check out Jehovah's Witnesses and governing body and have a look at some of those guys talking and you'll see pedophile tattooed on their foreheads almost you'll see that's a pedophile no doubt about it and and they're talking to the people like their little children like one of them i, I couldn't believe it i was just i nearly vomited he's going brothers and sisters in these critical days that we live in, dear brothers and sisters, we have to be very careful about other people's health and continue to wear the mask and get the injection to protect other people. God wants us to love other people. That's how he's talking. 
He's talking like he's talking to retarded kindergarten children. Yeah. It, it makes you want to freaking... It's disgusting. It's disgusting. Total rubbish mind control. Horrific. Horrific. And you can tell that this guy's dirty and up to some tricks. Once, one of the brothers from the Bethel um, headquarters followed one of the governing body home just to see, you know, uh, let's follow him. And he stopped by a bottle shop and walked out with a thousand dollars worth of whiskies. He followed him in the, he was watching him and he's whiskey, 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 big boxes. And he's carrying all these whiskies out. One of the governing bodies. Governing body. Well, they are. Some of them are, yeah. Yeah, of course. Some of them are, no. But uh, I don't think, uh, for instance, is that Osho? Is that his name? Yeah, that guy? I've seen him uh, hugging and kissing Klaus Schwab. Hugging, hugging and kissing Klaus, Klaus Schwab. The Dalai Lama. I've seen him in compromising with Jesuits. I've seen him in... You know, they're not who, they're not ascended masters. Hey, they're all frauds. The Pope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mother Teresa, she was uh, people trafficking. She was murdering those kids, not saving them. One knows that acquiring proper knowledge and research is absolutely critical. Yeah. But how about things like moral ownership and how to decide when and when to take proper action? What do you think about that? How does a person come to the right decision? Things that aren't written in books. Things that start from when you're here. Yeah, well, I guess everybody has a certain amount of goodness. Everybody has love. Everybody has hate. Everybody has intelligence. Everybody has these divine gifts. It's how they have developed these things that mitigate how good or bad their decisions are based on their evolution. So you can't, you know, be in the position of a judge when you see someone doing something that you wouldn't do. For instance, I wouldn't eat meat. I haven't eaten meat for 13 years. But I'm not going to judge someone that, that does because uh, most people do, and, and I love those people. But um, uh, other things like, for instance, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't drink alcohol, but if someone wanted to have a, a glass of wine with their meal, bless them, that's beautiful, it's magic. You know, be blessed. Um, so, but for me, I wouldn't do it. Like, it would hurt me to do that to get involved with alcohol or something like that, right? So it would hurt me. It's not that I'm better than someone who doesn't. It's just that that's where I have arrived. So with more knowledge and more understanding, there is more onerous duty to be a role model or to, you know, be exemplary. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Which we know, and then the spring from April, yeah. summer. So what about Australia? How does that work on the map? It's opposite, right? It's opposite, but the astrological system is a one-way street. It's, it doesn't change in Australia. Remember how we said that um, the sun does that ramp? See, this is why tropical astrology is the only system that is 100% correct. Sidereal processional astrology is not. And I can prove it to you by showing you uh, how you can tell people's sun sign by looking at them and it only works tropically, only. When I go to India and I say to someone, oh, you're, a, you're a, um, a Scorpio, and they say, no, I'm Libra, I'm Libra. And I say, no, you're Scorpio because I can see it. <laughs> you can see it. 
So they're out by 23 days. Okay? And so because the Tropic of Cancer is up here, the equator is here, and the Tropic of Cancer is down here, and there's the Earth, and the Sun is going up and down this ramp. So here is Cancer, here is Aries, here is Capricorn, and here is Libra. So Cancer, Libra, Capricorn. Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn. And so this determines, this climb and the degrees in which the Sun changes every day the nature of its magnetic energy emanating to the Earth is what determines what uh, uh, effect it produces in the individual according to this ramp. It's, it's all according to that ramp. Bec From the southern hemisphere to the non northern yeah. hemisphere? Yeah, no, nothing. It doesn't change because, because everything, all, all things astrological are centered on the sun. It's all centered on the sun and the position of the sun. So, for instance, on March the 21st, the sun enters Aries. There at that position every year since the beginning of history and will never move. The equinox will always be there, the solstice will always be there, and that will always be there. Regardless of the, the stars processing behind this tropical system, tropical just means, just means the solstices and the equinoxes, these four points, they are tropical. So, because that never changes, spring is always here, it's never moved. Summer is always here, it's never moved. You know, summer's never going to be in January. It's always going to be in July. And so that's fixed. The tropical system is fixed. Every year since the beginning of history, the equinox has happened on March the 21st. It never changes. And it never will. And so that is what determines throughout the whole Earth what... See, I was born in Australia, the Southern Hemisphere. So I'm not Libran. I'm Aryan, and you can see that I'm Aryan. Let me just show you quickly some of the features of the signs. The rising shine, sh sh especially if you were born at night, is more prominent. If you're born during the day, as I was, your sun sign is more prominent. So, where is that? No, no, the one. This one will be a good one for you. Uh, astrological body types. So, see that? That's Aries from March the 21st to April 20. First, I'll go through all the. See the Aries? The Ram. Hugh Hefner. You can see the, the Ram. You can see the, the Mars iron. You can see the Ram archetype in these people. Look at the Taurians, how different, how different they are. Oh. See the more Venetian eyes, Venusian eyes, there's more the bull, the big necks, the earthiness. They're more earthy. Aryans are fiery. Huh? Oh, I get it. Gemini, they've all got the skewed facial twin face. You see, 
one eye goes one way, one eye goes the other way. These are all Gemini's. It, the, the skewed facial look, you can see that happy, cheeky look about them. Cancer. You can see the moon, you know. You can see the, the moonshine. Those really penetrating moon eyes. The round heads. Um, this big forehead. Leo, heart-shaped. Heart-shaped manes. They've all got the mane. The jaguars. Panthers. Cheetahs. Stanley Kubrick. Leo the lion. You see, you can see it. You, you, can, you can see it. And then, of course, you've got to factor in their, their, their uh, rising signs. Virgo, you know, they've got the Virgos also like Gemini, skewed face, very gypsy. These are the most gypsy people. These people are very, very, you know, um, like hermits and, and uh, eclectic, very eclectic people, really sort of... For, for women, it's a beautiful sign. It it's, gives them great beauty. Sophia Loren, uh, uh, you know, all these... Libra, round heads, uh, vertical, uh, horizontal eyebrows, um, V-shaped smile, vertical dimples, perfectly round heads. My son's Libran. I've got the long Aryan head. My son's head is about half the size of mine. And it's round. Perfectly round Libran head. Because it's balance. It's Libra. You can see the Libra. You can see it. Ah, well, that's a mixture. Scorpio. They've all got the bird beaks. See, they've all got beaks. Like me. Yeah, you've got, you've got, you've got the hawk. You, you look like a hawk. They all look, Scorpios all look like hawks. Yeah, they're bird beaks. It's the bird. It's the eagle. And deep. Huh? Why are Oh, because they're sexy. If you're going to have a harem, you need at least one taurine in your harem. At least one. Scorpio, Sagittarius, horse, big horse teeth. Big smile, long faces, long, always, they're happy. See, the Scorpios are serious Mars. They've got that real, all right, I'm serious, deep and penetrating, and I've got questions for you. Sagittarians, happy-go-lucky, no worries, giggling, funny, happy, Jupiterian. Capricorn. Ah, success. You can see something twinkle in the eye, you know. They're, they're, uh, they've got smaller facial features as well. They've got the goat looking, you know, head shape. Capricorn is what? The December, January, right? Yep. Wow. Aquarius. Um, see how the eyes are very close together? They're... they're, they're face is sort of more compacted. What's on their face is narrow and they've always got a little tip, little square tip on the end of their nose. Aquarians, you can tell she's got a little tip on her nose. A little, that one, he's got it. That's an Aquarian nose. Pisces, well, <laughs> they've, got, they've got wide eyes like the fish. See, the fish have their eyes out here. See, so you see they've got a more wide a wider, you can see that one's very typically Piscean. That stands out. Can I talk to you something? This is so basic, but is that, are, they, are you picking this based on the sun sign? And, and the rising. And the rising. So, see, these will all have different rising signs. If I had time, what I'd do then is I would go through their rising signs and then tell you, describe, and describe all the features. For instance, let's do this one, right? So, physical traits of Pisces. Um,
No, nothing there. Let's go to here. So, facial features. Uh, the facial lines all seem to run to the bottom, sinking to the feet below. In contrast, the wide, inflated cheekbones appear to give the upper face its needed buoyancy to keep the eyes and, brown and brows above the wavy water surface. Judd Hirsch and Lynn Redgrave, with their Piscean son and, and ascendants, these are both son and ascendants, show the sagging bone structure and facial lines of the fish. Note how one side of the face sinks below the other, twisting the bone structure and the flesh. See that? Right? These, these are things... Huh? Uh, I don't like to do that because um, then you start thinking, right? How I do it is I just, I'm with someone, right? Having a coffee or something and all of a sudden I go, you're Aquarian. It just jumps out. You've got to get a feel for it. If you start thinking about it, there's many factors. For instance... Yeah. I've called many people straight away. It's straight away, instantly. But if someone says, well, guess, it, it just puts uh, an element in there that... Yeah. All right. What? Time up. Oh, okay. We're finished. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, by the way, one more thing, guys. Hey, I've been taking this um, black oxygen, and it's the best thing I've ever done. This comes from 60 feet under the ground. It's got over 70 minerals. And for graphene oxide, this is your best thing to clean your body from what's coming. Black oxygen. I've got it available on my, my website, Universal Truth School. It is, have you noticed my hair's gone a bit darker? I put it, I'm putting it in my hair. <laughs> and the good thing about it is it kills fungus and parasites. So what happens is with people who have a lot of parasites is when they eat, the parasites get all the nutrients and leave the poo behind. Whereas this goes straight into your system, kills the parasites which bypasses them and mineralizes your body. So it shortcuts it. This is, look into it. You can do the research on my website, universaltruthschool.com. Black oxygen. Is it a powder? Powder. It's powder. Water. Here, I'm drinking it now. Let's take it from 60 feet underground on an ancient seabed in Canada. Sorry, ancient lake bed in Canada. So it's as clean as it comes. Because we are getting attacked, guys. Graphene oxide and hydrogel is in everything. When you look outside, you look in the sky right now. Chemtrails. Yeah. Yeah. I think this. I think this is going to be a saviour. Look into it.